welcome back to the channel guys it is me 8744 so today we're going to be doing my uh afcon uh 2023 final preview so when it comes to this final this is the best final we could have probably got and i'm glad we got this final because in terms of narratives there's so much narratives on the line for this one and i'm gonna start first on the narratives let's start with ivory coast i think if they are to win this afcon it would be one of the craziest things we've seen alive coming through a third place in the group stage just barely relying on goal difference and having other countries do you a favor like Mozambique and um, Morocco. And then the round of 16, they were pit up against Senegal, the defending AFCON champions. Many of us thought they would get crushed, humiliated, but they defied the odds. They won against Senegal on penalties. And then in the quarterfinals, they played against Mali. And sure, the odds were against them. Like, you know, they were 1-0 down. They had like literally a few sec a few minutes left to go. Can they score that late equalizer? And they did. They did. They scored a late equalizer, and then in the 120th minute, they scored. I mean, it's just Ivory Coast just knows how to keep doing this. And then in the quarter semifinals, they defeat Dior Congo. Well, I won nil by a good margin. You could tell this Ivory Coast team is that there's belief in this team. There's this idea that this team isn't going to just give up. They want to continue and continue and continue. And fun fact for you guys, the last time the host nation made the final in AFCON was 2006. So... And also, the current coach, MRSA Bailly, I think is the coach, he was actually part of that 2006 golden generation for Ivory Coast. So this is a great chance for him to redeem himself, because I believe 2006, they lost to Egypt, I think. No, sorry, Egypt was a host. Egypt was a host. They lost to Egypt um, um 2006 AFCON final. As for Nigeria, this was a team that many of us thought they would flop in this year's tournament. Many of us thought they would go out round of 16, maybe quarters at best. But none of many of us didn't have them in the final. And the fact they did so has been incredible. And we like to clown on Jose Pacero, say he's a garbage coach, whichever, whichever. And he may still be, but he has improved tactically. He isn't as bad as we made him out to be, you know, because credit to him. He changed his formation after the game against Hector Guinea, which they should have won, to a back three. And you can see how much better they are defensively, you know. And up, and they haven't conceded a goal since the um the uh, Hector Guinea game. Now, I know people tell me, what about the game against South Africa? Well, technically, they did concede. But it was a uh, penalty. So they haven't conceded an open play goal in, in this tournament. So that's what makes this final so interesting is that both these teams have had to work hard to get to the final. Both these teams have had to, you know, grind their way through to the final. Because both these teams haven't really been that convincing. Right? Whereas the likes of Senegal and Morocco were probably more convinced in the group stage compared to these two. But they're not in the final. They went both went on the round of 16. And that's the beauty with AFCON is that the AFCON just shows that any team can win. It doesn't matter what your form is whatsoever. It's just about on the day. And on the day, it's going to be very interesting. I think the two players to look out for, and let's start, the two players to look out for are obviously Victor Osterman and Sebastian Howard. Let's start with Victor Osterman. Victor Osterman, I know you've had a good tournament so far. You've been scoring goals. You've been helping the team out. You've been creating link up play. You got to score in the final. You have to score the final, or at least come up clutch with an assist. Because Victor Osterman, you have only scored one goal in this tournament. One goal. I know you could say, oh, you've had some goals just loud here and there. The fact remains, you've only scored one goal. Now, I'm not trying to suggest he's been bad. Obviously, I'm not trying to say that. But I do genuinely feel like he can improve. And I do think he is a good striker. Just hasn't really showed up in the, the prolificness. Because his off-the-ball movement has been great. His passing has been great. It's just he needs to find that finishing touch. Especially in a final of this magnitude. And he's got the chances. You know, it's not like he's not getting chances. It's just he's getting the chances. As for Ivory Coast, Sebastian Haller, um, he's also very important to Ivory Coast. You can see how much he brings to them, offensively speaking. And he finally started his first game in the semifinal against Euro Congo because most of this tournament, he's been battling through injuries. Obviously, he hasn't really been... I don't I don't even know if he's fully fit at this current moment, but he's fit enough, I suppose. And he has to come up clutch in the final because he scored that clutch winning goal against Euro Congo. So how do I see the game going, tactically speaking? I think, I think Nigeria is going to hold most possession. No, sorry. I think Ivory Coast is going to hold most of the possession. I think Ivory Coast is going to hold most possession. I think they're going to be the front team to dictate the pace. Because they're at home, I expect them I expect them to be the more aggressor of the teams. Nigeria not there, is going to be looking to counterattack. And I think with um, Ivory Coast, the key is to be patient, right? And I think that's the key to um, this game is that whichever team is, pa whichever team is patient will be able to get the job done, right? Because I think for Nigeria, my thing is that this is a good team, as I said before, but this team is not clinical enough. Whereas Ivory Coast, I would make argument are more clinical. I would say, though, Nigeria better defensively. So I think what the key for Ivory Coast is to make sure that they get that goal. And the, the 
and get that goal in 90 minutes because I f- do really feel like Nigeria is going to score. I, I I think both these teams will concede a goal. So in fact, I think it's going to end one one. And then I look at this. I look at the substitutions. And why am I bringing substitutions up? Because I think this is where the game is going to be win and lost. Because I'm looking at Nigeria substitutions and I'm looking at um, Ivory Coast substitution. Nigeria, you have Mofi and Ian Nacho. Whereas Ni- Ivory Coast, you have Singare. You can bring on uh, Diakata. You can bring on. There's a lot of players you can bring on for Ivory Coast. I think Ivory Coast for me is bench is superior to Nigeria. And which is the reason why I have a feeling that Ivory Coast is going to score an extra time. I think Ivory Coast is going to score an extra time because I feel like their bench is superior. I feel like someone off the bench is going to score that game winning goal for Ivory Coast to be that clutch person. And I just feel like I just feel like it's destiny for Ivory Coast. I just feel like it's destiny for Ivory Coast to win this tournament. After all they've gone through this tournament, it would be weird for them to lose the final. Obviously, we know host nations can lose the final. Uh, look at England and Brazil, obviously, and a few years ago. But I do genuinely feel like this is Ivory Coast's tournament to lose, you know. And for Nigeria, as I said, man, this is the first final since 2013. As also, this is also Ivory Coast's first final since 2015. So both these teams have a won in a long time, and they both need this trophy desperately. It's been nine years for Ivory Coast, and it's been 10 years for, uh, sorry, 11 years for Nigeria. So, like I said, guys, that's how I think the game is going to end out. So I think the game is going to end 2-1. I think Ivory Coast is going to score two goals, and I think Nigeria is going to score one. And I think Ivory Coast will lift the trophy after extra time. So it should be a good game. I'm looking forward to see how this game goes out. This is going to be very interesting. And um, like I said, guys, made the best team win. So please remember to like and subscribe. Um, it's going to be interesting. And actually, let me do my goal scores real quick. Let me tell you how the game is going to go. So I think Ivory Coast is going to open the scoring first. I think Ivory Coast will open the scoring. And this will actually force Nigeria to come from behind. We haven't seen Nigeria come We haven't seen Nigeria come from behind at all. In this, oh, actually, yeah, they have against Eric Tugini. My bad. But yeah, I think Ivory Coast is going to take the lead. And I'm going to say the goal scorer good for Ivory Coast. I'm going to say it's going to be Frank Hesse. I just got a feeling he's going to score, uh, maybe through a set piece. Uh, then in the second half, I have a feeling that Victor Osman will not score. I have a feeling it will be Adamela Lukman. I think he will score. So I think Ivory Coast will score in, like, I would say the 60th minute. Nigeria, I think, will equalize in, like, 85th minute. And then I think Ivory Coast, I think Nigeria will have the momentum to extra time. Ivory Coast will be defensive. And then Ivory Coast will completely switch a gear in extra time when the substitutions come on. And I have a feeling one of the substitutes is going to come on to score the game and go. I I don't know at this current moment. I would if I had to make a guess, I'm going to maybe say Sangare because I don't think Sangare is going to start. Um, but yeah, it's going to be very interesting. So yeah, I would say Sangare scores a hundred and hundred and fifth minute. And now if it goes to penalties, if it goes to penalties, which I don't predict, but if it does go to penalties, I am back in Ivory Coast. I am back in Ivory Coast on penalties, um, for sure, especially with the home field advantage. I would be surprised. Niger- I mean, maybe Nigeria could win on penalties, but I, I think Ivory Coast have a better chance to win on penalties if it does go to penalties. So, yeah, man, that's pretty much going to be it, guys. So, remember, guys, we're going to be doing a live review, uh, live reaction to the final on Sunday. Sunday night, it'll be a brief one, guys. It'll be around 30 minutes, probably. Uh, so, join me for that, guys. And, um, yeah, like I said, guys, made the best team win. And um, I'm hoping I'm hoping we have a good final. That's all I'm going to say. All right, so please turn to like and subscribe. Check out me in the description below. And, yeah. Comment over your thoughts, comments below if there's any major target points. And yeah, I'll see you guys later, man. Peace out.